Hey, what is up YouTube? My name is Odi and today I'm going to be talking about something that's a little bit uh, just say near and dear to my heart. That is this guy, the 7950X3D uh, AMD Ryzen 9 7950X3D. It's a 16 core, 32 thread CPU with a minimum boost clock of 4.2 gigahertz and a max boost clock of 5.7 gigahertz. Um, I'm currently upgrading is I this is supposed to be like an upgrade from my AM4 system. This runs on AM5, by the way, um, the AM5 system. I was upgrading my AM4 system with DDR4. Yeah, with DDR4, uh, 5950X. Um, it had like a 3080 Ti at the time also. Yeah, um, I was upgrading that system to this new system. And I just wanted to give my thoughts on what my experience was you know why i chose this cpu to begin with because truth of the matter is like for the most for most people just get you know a, a decent laptop and you should be good right so probably my recommendation here would be to get the m1 pro which is what i use on on just like my daily driver laptop um, with the apple silicon m1 i love that laptop it's really really good and um so on and so forth but something that has been coming up recently is you know why should any developer get like a desktop when you know a laptop can do and that is true but in my experience right if you're someone that deals with like in my case if you deal with infrastructure you have to use docker containers you're running containers all the time whether to do to set up environments or you're doing kubernetes and things like that or even just compile let's say you're you're compiling huge uh, 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 projects, right? So let's say you're, compi you're compiling maybe a compiler, if you work on co things like compilers and stuff, or you're compiling an operating system or the Linux kernel or something like that, you know, those kind of debugging processes that you have to do over and over again, those things take time, right? And that's one of the strong arguments I have for, you know, someone, for a software de a developer using like a desktop over a laptop. Trust me, I use both, but yeah, in my experience, desktops are usually very, very um, snappy, right? When it, when it comes to compiling and even day-to-day -day tasks, right? Just dragging, dropping, moving things around. Pair a very good CPU with a very good high refresh rate monitor. And oh my God, mwah, it's going to be like effortless. Like as you're dragging windows, everything is open and everything is um, snappy and quick. But... Um, I really want to use this, uh, you know, opportunity to like talk about what my mindset was going with this particular purchase, because to a lot of people, they may look at this as overkill. Why do you need 16 threads, 32, 16 core CPU and all of that? So I'm just going to give you my, my train of thought as to why I picked this particular CPU and let's go from there. So the first reason I picked this CPU, right, is because it has um good gaming performance so if you don't know this cpu comes with two ccds or compute complexes each compute complex has like eight cores in it right so the 7950x non-3d is exactly the same thing it has uh, two sets of cores each with eight cores and you know it, can, it has simultaneous multi-threading smt or the mod or i can't remember what it's called hyper threading on intel what that means is it can essentially run two threads in parallel at the same time. So when it's doing the fetch for one, it's probably doing the decode for the next thread and, and all of that stuff. Anyway, I don't want to go into deep to that. But yeah, because of that, you had what's essentially 16 threads on one CCD and 16, 8 core 16 thread on another CCD. Now, the difference between this 7950X3D and the 7950X is that 7950X just has like regular cores whereas with the 3d one of the cores had an extra layer of cache put on top of it and clocked lower and it was clocked lower because of course they didn't want it to burn the cpu and all of that but that just meant that you now had two two sets of eight cores each one set of eight cores boosts high threads high you know high thread count everything but with a normal amount of cache while the other isn't doesn't boost as high but has huge lots of cash and one of the the reasons they did this was because of gaming 
in particular, right? If you play games, games are very, very cash and memory sensitive and they're very, very memory hungry. So because of that, you have um, the extra cash which boosts gaming performance. We'll get into the benchmarks later, but just something to keep in mind. So one of the reasons why this CPU was very, very confusing was because A, it was more expensive. If you wanted a gaming CPU, right, you'd rather, you, it's better you just go for the cheaper version of this that just had eight cores, right, with the 3DB cache, um, like the 7800X 3D. That was an excellent CPU. It's cheaper. It gets you, you know, it's even faster in many games. It's even faster than this particular CPU because there's no thread switching going on and things like that. All games have access to the cache at all times, which was great. But also, if you wanted like multi-core performance, then get the 7950X, right? Because that one just had two sets of cores all clocked higher and all clocked really, really high and everything. So it wasn't really clear why anyone would get this CPU. And that confused a lot of reviewers. And as a software engineer, I think that this is actually targeted towards people like us, right? People who deal with cores, um, Maybe I should just go into why I chose this CPU in the first place. So the first reason I chose this CPU was thermals, right? Um, the 7950X has um, this issue of being of clocking very high. So it, it tries to clock as high as possible to maximize performance. And in the process of doing that, it will always try to soak up as much the temperatures go very very high right it can get up to i think the the junction temperature was 90 degrees c or so um i, I think hardware unbox has like a whole video on it but yeah it, it's it's used to clock very high they take a lot of energy and as a result even the power consumption was high as well and the thing with power consumption is you may ask okay, why do you need you know you know, does it matter once you have a good power supply, blah, blah, blah. But you see, the second law of thermodynamics is it's a very tricky thing because even though, yes, you will see your PSU can handle that kind of power, you have to also remember that that heat has to go somewhere. And, you know, in my own case, I have a, I have a, a small office here, which means that if I have any components that are constantly running, it just fills the whole room with heat very, very quickly, which was bad. So, that's one reason, you know, I was very keen on any CPU I have to get has to be something that doesn't, you know, take a lot of power. It's also the reason I disqualified, you know, the 13900K and the 14900K from Intel because those things just guzzle up so much power. Um, the second reason I needed a CPU like this is because I wanted to have as many cores as possible. Not PE cores like Intel, which, which has like performance cores and efficiency cores, and the efficiency cores are not as good as the performance cores, blah, blah, blah. Like what I do on a daily basis is I run Kubernetes clusters, I run Docker containers, run multiple mo um, microservices, each running, con uh, connecting to each other, and things like that. And for that, right, and I still want to be able to do other things. And in order to do that, you need to do that level of virtualization. You need to have dedicated cores that you dedicate and say, CPU, these sets of cores should handle these virtual machines, right? So being that the kind of work is really a core heavy workload, it made more sense not to go with the uh, uh, 7800X 3D, um, which was also a good CPU, but to get those extra cores, right? Because that means that if I run Minikube or I run uh, Kubernetes or whatever, you know, in my in my system, those cores aren't affecting every other thing I'm doing. Because I, I promise you, by the time you run Visual Studio or in the case Rider, and you run like two instances of it and so on, you, you'll be out of cores very, very quickly. So that was the second reason I, I, I got this CPU. This CPU has all the cores, it clocks less, has excellent gaming performance, right? Which is another thing I wanted to mention. Now, the gaming performance isn't as good as the 7800X 3D because that one, like I said earlier, it doesn't have any um, uh, cross issues. But also, if you have like a very, very powerful GPU like I do, the 4090, for example, on, on this, my editing machine, which I used to play games, um, you need a very fast CPU to keep up with that GPU. That GPU is excellent, right? Uh, I work with 4K monitors here, so it only makes sense to get that kind of GPU to match that kind of power and so on and so forth. So 
yeah, those are my my thoughts as to why I picked this guy over like an Intel 13900K or a 4900K. Power consumption was very important to me. And secondly, gaming performance. And yeah, and I needed the cores as well. So yeah, this is one of the reasons why you will get this um, CPU over all the other CPUs as well. If you are a content creator who happened to be a gamer, who happened to be a software engineer who deals with virtualization containers and things like that then i can't recommend this cpu more i can't recommend it enough rather this is one hell of a cpu and to prove my point i ran some benchmarks right before after the upgrade i also ran the same benchmarks on my m1 uh pro and i think i even ran a few benchmarks with chess yeah chess is another thing i do so uh, because I play chess a lot, I analyze games and things like that. I also run like, you know, uh, chess engines like Stockfish and Fritz and all of that locally on my computer to analyze games and things like that. So you need a very good CPU that has a lot of cores. And I'm going to also show the benchmarks for that as well. So you can see what the difference was, you know, um, running from like, say, an M1 Pro to my 5800X3D uh, CPU. I have a dedicated gaming CPU separate, I know, right? So in summary, I can't um, recommend this CPU more. It's a really good, excellent CPU. It's a huge step up from uh, the uh, 5950X. And I'm pretty happy with it. Um, one caveat is memory, right? So if you're using very fast memory, in fact, I made the mistake of buying two sets of 16 gigs of uh, memory and that caused a lot of headaches so yeah i had to is this 16 gigs yeah, it was two sets of 32 gigs and that caused like memory issues and stuff so i couldn't run it at the advertised speeds um, so that's something to keep in mind um but other than that yes training issues i get a little bit of training issues here and there where i switch on the, the pc and it doesn't boot up for a long period of time now, granted, it's not as widespread, so it happens maybe once in a month or two months. I will just notice that, okay, I reboot my system and it takes a little too long to boot. But other than that, um, it works really well, very low temperatures. I have a uh, 360mm um, AIO and this thing runs very, very quietly, very, very silent. So, yeah, this is a, this is a great CPU. Highly recommend it. And yeah, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think about the CPU. Do you have the 5950X or the 79 or any of the CPUs we've mentioned today? What's your experience like? Just, you know, give it to me. Tell me what it is in the comment section and let's have that conversation. Until next time, see you. Peace.